Dalton, and this is Active Aging, a production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Today we'll be talking about Medicare D, and we'll be visiting an innovative fitness and nutrition program at the North Cambridge Se Senior Center. But first off, we have a guest, Janet Hand, Manager of Advocacy and Community Relations at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. She's here to describe the Medicare D prescription drug program. Janet, before we launch into the Medicare D program, can you tell our viewers about what, what basically is Medicare? Um, absolutely, Marianne. Um, Medicare is a longstanding health insurance retirement program for that came out of the Older Americans Act in the 1960s. It um, has three parts to it now. It used to have two parts. It split into Medicare A, Medicare B. Medicare A pays for hospital, um, hospitalization, short-term rehab, um, and Part B pays for all of the outpatient services, um, doctor's visits, any type of testing that you might have to have done, like an x-ray, CAT scan, MRI, blood work. Um, it also um, can pay for medical equipment, really important that a lot of people don't realize, is that you don't have to go out and buy a hospital bed if you need one at home. All you need is your doctor to write a script if you're on Medicare, and Part B will pay 80% of the cost of that hospital bed, oxygen machine, whatever it might be and, that the doctor needs you to have at home. And how old do you need to be to qualify for the program? Well, um, you can qualify in two different ways. Um, it was originally started as a retirement program, but it also covers younger disabled people that have paid into the system and become disabled before they reach retirement age. Um, Currently, the stipulation for people that are younger and disabled is that you've got to be on Social Security disability for two years, and then you can enroll in Medicare. Medicare um, Part A has no premium because you've paid into it already. Um, so, but Medicare B does have a premium that comes out of your Social Security check um, every month. and. Um, the uh, age limitation for the retirement portion of Medicare B, or, or Medicare per se, not just Medicare B, but both parts, um, is 65. Um, one, you can take early retirement at 62, but that doesn't mean you get Medicare along with it. You still have to wait until age 65, and you are automatically enrolled in Part A, and then you tell Social Security and Medicare whether you want to enroll in Part B or not. They give you that option. However, a lot of people don't enroll in Part B and find out they need it later to go see the doctor, join an HMO, get medical equipment, all of those types of things. And when they join later than age 65 or two years after they become disabled, their premiums are higher. So you don't want to have to pay a penalty, and my advice to everybody is always to join Part B when you're enrolled in Part A. And that age limit for seniors that are on retirement is 65. Okay, so now tell us a little bit about Medicare D, This mm. is a, the new and exciting um, <laughs> element of the Medicare program. Okay, Medicare D is for prescription drugs, and it's something that we lobbied for as healthcare advocates for 15 to 20 years because most of the seniors that we take care of, or most of the seniors out there are on some type of medication, okay? When this program started back in the 60s, a lot of the drugs that we have now that are life-sustaining drugs weren't even available then, so prescription coverage wasn't even thought about when they first originated this program. So the prescription coverage, Part D, was part of the Medicare Modernization Act, which went into effect last January. Um, a lot of people are unhappy about it because of the way it's being administered right now. So um, there are amendments in Congress to give Medicare bulk buying power um, from the drug companies uh, to lower the cost. Um, there are also amendments to return um, the administration of the Part D prescription benefit to Medicare itself. Um, those are two things that we wanted from the very beginning that we didn't get in the initial go round, but um, we're hopeful that we can amend the Medicare D Modernization Act to include those two. So who administers the Medicare D program? Well, currently the way that it's administered is through private insurance companies um, who got contracts with CMS 
to offer products to seniors that were supposed to be cost effective and help them um, pay for their prescriptions, um, which has really reduced prices for a lot of people. I don't want to indicate that it hasn't been a good um, thing, because it has. For a great many seniors, those that never got any help before with the cost of their prescription drugs, they're now getting some help with that. So that's a good thing. So should everyone be enrolling, every Medicare beneficiary? Well, a lot of people that we met on the first go-round said, you know, I'm, don't, I'm not on any medications. Why should I join this plan? Well, because it's like the other parts of Medicare um, B, for instance, that I spoke about earlier. If you join it late, they charge you a penalty. Same with Part D. If you enroll later in Part D, let's say you're 65 now or 67 and you're not on any medications, so you don't see the point in enrolling in Part D. You reach age 70, you're on medications, then you want to join Part D, they're going to charge you a penalty for those three years that you didn't enroll. Your premiums will, will be higher. So our advice to people that are not taking any prescriptions right now is join the cheapest plan there is, and they are graduated. Um, a lot of them, plans come with bills and whistle, whistles and extra coverage for this and extra coverage for that. Um, some of them are as cheap as $13 a month. Interesting. Okay, so if you don't need coverage but you don't want to pay a penalty later, then you enroll in one of those products. You have the ability to change um, to another product or another company that's administering the benefit annually. So people now have an opportunity to enroll. Can, can you tell us a little bit about open enrollment? Well, open enrollment last year when it first started ran for approximately um, six to seven months. It started November 15th and it ended May 15th. So people had a lot of time to decide what they were going to do, um, which way they were going to go. Um, this year, open enrollment starts again on November 15th, but it will end on December 31st. So there's not as much of an opportunity for people to enroll. So they need to be doing a little bit of homework before November 15th looking at some plans. So how do they sign up and, um, you know, can they do it themselves? Do they need assistance um, from someone else in the community who has a little expertise in this area? Medicare has a wonderful website. Um, www.medicare.gov, which we use frequently. Um, it has the plans listed up there, what their formularies are, you type your drugs in. So if you're computer literate and if you have access to a computer, you can actually do this yourself, okay? okay. It's not as mystifying as everybody has made it seem. The two most important things that you need to have on hand when you're doing this is your drug list and your Medicare card, because if you're not enrolled in Part A and Part B, you can't enroll in Part D. Mm -hmm. um, if you need help, if you're afraid of looking at these plans, if you don't have a computer, if you're not computer literate, you can get um, help at our agency. Um, you can get help at your local council on aging. You can get help through the SHINE program. You can call Elder Affairs. Um, we have SHINE counselors on staff. There are many SHINE counselors in the community that helped last year that are willing to help people again this year. Okay, so there's a lot of resources for I people, think so, yes, people I think so. out there. And, um, and what should they bring with them um, if they're going to go provide well, assistance? Well, let's say they've, had, um, uh, they've been enrolled in one plan and they want to switch over to another. Let's say they were in an HMO and they want to switch out of that. Um, they should always have their health cards with them, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, their Medicare card especially. And if they have, if they're on something um, the term dual eligible has been used a lot. If they're also on Medicaid, okay, if they're low income under the poverty level and they also receive Medicaid, which is called Mass Health in Massachusetts, um, and Medicare, they should bring those cards to the table. Whoever they're meeting with, they need to have all of their health ins insurance information with them and they need to have their drug list. And what I mean by a drug list is exactly which drugs you're on. And if you don't have a list, bring your pill bottles with mm -hmm. you because the information can be taken right off the label. Um, counselors that are helping you find the appropriate plan will need to know the names of your drugs, um, the milligrams dosage, mm -hmm. um, how many are, you know, mm -hmm. subscribe, are prescribed for you each month so that they can do a proper search on the Medicare website.
for the most appropriate and cost efficient plan. Now, is there extra help available for some um, for some categories of pe individuals? Sure, um, extra help, also co called low income mm -hmm. subsidies. Um, three ways that you can get help, and you and can that, get and that's help, help with, with the premium. Right, and, right. Okay. Yeah. The cost of Medicare. Um, the benchmark premium for Massachusetts in this region is thirty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. However, some are lower, some are higher. As I said before. Now, if you don't want to join one because you say to yourself, well, geez, I don't have an extra $30 a month to spend on yet another premium, you can get help from um, MassHealth if you are poverty level or lower. Incomes above that can apply for the low-income subsidy through Social Security. We have applications in our office, and Social Security has applications in their office. Many people on the first go-round were mailed a, a white packet, an envelope about this size, that had an application in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the LIS, uh, low-income subsidy from Social Security. And then in the state of Massachusetts, we have Prescription Advantage, which used to be, before Medicare D, their prescription program that seniors joined. Now it acts as RAP coverage or extra help, as some people call it. Um, that helps with people's premiums, co-pays, deductibles, and the gap in coverage, known as the donut hole. Interesting. Now, is there, is there anything else important um, as we you know, wrap this up that um, our viewers should know about Medicare D? Um, well, some people don't have to join. Mm -hmm. Um, some people have a retiree plan okay. that has drug coverage. That's called creditable coverage. Mm -hmm. Okay, If you have a letter that you got from your um, place of employment, it could have been Raytheon, it could have been a city employer, it could have been a state employer, that they are continuing your drug coverage along mm -hmm. with your health insurance and your retiree plan, you put that letter away in a lockbox somewhere with your birth certificate mm -hmm. because that's the only thing that will negate joining the drug plan later and, and costing you more money Excellent. if you have creditable coverage. Yeah. Creditable coverage is also the Veterans Association. If you have veterans coverage, you don't have to join Medicare oh, D. Excellent. Okay. If you have a letter from your previous employer, you don't have to. Um, so, but as I say, keep the letter because who knows what they're going to do in the future. And if they drop the drug coverage in the future, you're going to need that letter okay. to not pay a higher premium. Well, great. Thank you so much. This has been um, really, uh, really, really valuable information, Janet. Um, and all the information, um, if you need contact information for the um, signing up for Medicare, we'll show that at the end of the program. Our next segment is um, we're going to go out to the North Cambridge Senior Center and visit the You Can program, which is an innovative fitness and nutrition program. Hello, I'm Mary Ann Dalton and today we're at the North Cambridge Senior Center talking to seniors from Cambridge and Somerville about a unique health and fitness program called You Can, which is sponsored by Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. And um, this is one of the participants. I just wanted to find out, can you tell me, um, you know, how you've benefited from You Can? I think this is a wonderful program and it has made me get out and walk more. I enjoy walking, but this way I really get into it and I with the other group and we just have a wonderful time. Now I heard here you wear pedometers. How does that help? <laughs> okay, we all wear have a little pedometer here. And it tells how many miles we have walked in one day. It, it records our steps. And then at the end of the day, we write it down and we give it to Chris and he, he'll take and he'll read them and he'll tell us how, how good we are doing or if we should be doing better or what. So have you noticed, are you walking a lot more now that you're doing the program? Oh yes, I certainly am. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful program. Um, now, I know there's also a nutrition component. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? That is also great. We learn what is best for us to eat and uh, about the importance of fruits and vegetables in our diet, along with the exercise, and it's a fabulous program. We learn a lot from this. That's really great. Have you noticed, are you eating differently? Or do you make me different kind of meals now? Uh, I'm eating more fruits and vegetables, and I'm uh, exercising more. It's just been great. It's just been wonderful. 
That's that's fabulous. Do you think you'll continue on with um, this your new healthy habits? I certainly will. I certainly will. I'll get out there and walk every day that I can. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm talking with Andrea Libertini, who manages the UCAM program. She's the Community Meal Sites Manager for Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Um, Andrea, can you tell me a little bit about UCAN? Sure. It's um, a 10-week nutrition and exercise program. It's a national program sponsored by the Administration on Aging. Um, we get a group of seniors together. We teach them about different nutrition topics each week, and we do a walking group. And we talk about um, physical activity and the importance of nutrition and physical activity for um, steps to healthier aging. Um, we also give each participant a pedometer. Um, so they wear that all day and they track all their steps. And it's really exciting because they love to see how many steps they do all day. And we add them up and let them know how many miles they've done as a group. Um, we have tons of food samples, um, prizes we give out. Perfect attendance, we do give out a, a gift certificate for sneakers at the end of the program. So it's, we've had good luck. Now you've been doing the program around the community. Um, how many different sites have you visited? Um, this is the seventh time we've done it. Yeah, throughout Somerville and Cambridge. Uh, that's great. That's great. And do you plan to continue the program? Yeah. As far as we can. I mean, a lot of sites that we've done it there already, they want to do it again. So we want to reach out to as many places as we can, and then we, we're willing to do it again at other places, new topics, new ideas. Yeah. And if someone wants to get involved, um, you know, where should they call? Oh, they can call the Somerville Cambridge Elder Services and ask for me, Andrea, and the nutrition department. And I can let them know what the schedule and the next upcoming uh, program's happening and what time. Excellent. Thanks, Andrea. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm here with Chris Joyce, who is working on the UCAM program. He's a physical therapy student, and he works with um, all of the UCAM participants on the fitness component. Um, Chris, can you tell me a little bit about some of the motivational tactics you use in UCAM? I see you had this kind of interesting map here. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, we give um, all the participants pedometers at the beginning of the program to keep track of how many steps they do. Every week, we give them a sheet. They fill out how many steps they do every night, and then they turn their sheet into me. I take the amount of steps that they do and turn it into miles. It's about 2,000 steps to a mile. And then I take the total miles and put it up here on the map. So we like to pick out um, destinations to go to at the beginning of the, the, beginning of the program. And this uses, it makes them uh, motivated, I guess, basically, to go to where they to where they want. Last time we went to Las Vegas and then we went up to California. This time I guess they chose to go down to Florida and then we're going to go across to Texas. So we really we set out like little stickers, set out goals for them every every week to try to get them to where we want them to be. Wow, it sounds like you're really generating a lot of enthusiasm for the for the program. That's great. participants in the um, from the UCAM program and I, I recognize some of you from previous programs have you some of you done this multiple times can you tell me like you know, why are you back <laughs> <laughs> no all this is my only my second time oh, your second yeah time. it's just more incentive when you're with the group to do things um, you know yeah. now, now were any of you like doing no exercise before you started this program or you all did a little bit of exercise but are, are you doing more now oh, definitely. yes yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We're definitely doing more. More walking. More walking and more conscious of what we're eating. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I feel great doing it. So um, have, are you experimenting with any new, like, recipes at home with cooking to eat healthier? Not me. <laughs> I eat healthy, but I don't cook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, do you come to the meal site and eat at the meal? Sometimes, yes, yep. Not every day, but sometimes, yeah. Have any of you um, tried any new like recipes or new meals for um, because you've been coming to UCAN? Yes, yeah. I will like like I don't care that much for cooking, but I do like to eat. So therefore, I like to cook. <laughs> That's great. But any of any of you have, have you tried anything new? Or changed your eating habits? All the time. I cook all the time. So have you changed your cooking though? No. 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 The only thing I use more olive oil than I did before. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 
How about, have any of you noticed any like changes in your like um, numbers when you go for physicals or like when your doctor, I know I had a participant last time told me that their, um, their glucose um, levels were better and um, somebody was like pre-diabetic and they were able to improve that in that way. How about anybody in this group? Oh, I've improved. I have acid reflux. Uh -huh. And so by learning how to eat better here, I've, my acid reflux has improved greatly. Oh, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. That's great. So, any anybody want to say anything else about you can? That's a good program. It's a wonderful. It's a, it's program. a wonderful program. It really makes you get out and move. Yeah, and that's the important thing to move. Keep moving. That's what they tell us. Excellent. Thank you. It's a wonderful program. It gives you to go to do things that you didn't do before. Anybody else? What would you tell it's a very interesting program. It uh, combines the uh, the eating with the physical, and we learn to uh, to combine the two. By the pedometer makes us work harder, seeing how many more steps we get. And so it's a, it's a wonderful program for everybody because it keeps them going. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm Mary Ann Dalton. Thank you for joining us on Active Aging. We look forward to seeing you next month. I'm Joseph visit. Medeiros, a lifelong resident of the city of Somerville. Uh, born here. Born here in 1920. I have given the, uh, the latter part of my life over to being an activist to assist uh, senior citizens in getting information and the different things we do. Now, other than that, as a, 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 I am totally blind. I have worked all my life. I have had several jobs. And I, the last job I worked 30 years for AT&T Technologies as a uh, bench man, a bench repair man, and tester inspector. I was educated at Perkins School for the Blind. Yeah. Well, when we first met you, and I, I seem to remember you were involved in a whole lot of things. You were a Silverhead legislator. In fact, I think you, uh, yeah, you were for this district, and so oh, you yeah. had the meetings when Joe was a representative and then a senator. Oh, were you a senator? Or just no, a just a rep. Just a rep. He arranged to have the meetings at the, at the rest home for the seniors to come to find out what the Silverhead legislature was doing, you know. Well, I've been an activist most of my latter life, and by activist I mean getting information, helping the blind, and the... Oh, I'm also a member, a board member of the Commission for Mayor's Commission for People with Disabilities. Yeah. And Al is also a member of the board. And we discuss the things that involve both dis disabilities and elderly people, which are many, many things that are the same. And we do our best to uh, uh, put this information out. And we have our program once a week at SCAT, and we discuss Oh, any current topics that we can give information on. Pull it there, Al. Uh, 
my name's Al Rubio. I was involved in the, uh, uh, well, I, I came to Somerville in 1985 after, after living uh, 50 years in Chicago and then about uh, uh, six or seven in Vermont where my wife was uh, working for IBM. And uh, <clears throat> we came to uh, Somerville to uh, take care of my mother who was then in her very late 80s and uh, 85 and she uh, died in uh, Let's see, 90, 1996, and uh, she was 102. She liked to walk and she liked to read, and uh, she was always complaining that the she wasn't doing enough of either one. So uh, I, we got her an exocycle and hooked up a reading lamp and a desktop, a small desktop, just big enough to hold a book or to write a note or a letter, and. Uh, uh, she'd be at that, both biking and reading or writing for three or four hours at a crack. And uh, she had that, and she was using that up until about two weeks before she died. Uh, now, she was always a community activist, and probably that's how, uh, how I got that way. And uh, in particular, uh, relative to Grand Union, etc., is that uh, the veterans have quite consistently since 1776 um, celebrated the fact that George Washington's first military assignment was in this area to protect the uh, uh, Boston and uh, keep the British uh, under control and not let them um, blow up Boston or d destroy it before the Navy, etc., moved out. The veterans would have a uh, memorial service every Sunday morning on New Year's Day uh, when George Washington ordered the Grand Union flag that we show on our program uh, raised. And that was the flag that was adopted uh, and became the official flag of the United Colonies.